Gnome 48 is out. After six months of development and thousands of lines of code, this release brings the heat with improved notifications, HDR support, and even tools to keep your screen time in check. This is more than just another update. Gnome 48 brings many quality of life improvements from major performance boosts with the dynamic triple buffering to the new Edweta fonts and an overhauled image viewer. Now, GNOME 48 looks to be the best release of GNOME that we've seen, but is it really worth the upgrade? Let's find out. First up, let's talk desktop notifications because in previous versions of GNOME, notifications just flooded your screen in one endless list, which made it kind of hard to find the alerts that mattered. Well, GNOME 48 fixes that with notification stacking. Now the alerts from the same app are grouped together, so if you get 10 new messages from your chat app, they're all tucked neatly into one expandable stack. You can expand or collapse them as you need to, so it's a much better experience because you finally get an uncluttered notification system. Now let's talk performance. GNOME 48 just got a lot faster. Performance has been a big focus in this release. Usually when software introduces performance improvements, it's kind of hard to tell because it's back-end stuff. But this time, whether you're opening apps, scrolling through files, or just navigating the desktop, you're gonna notice it. This is all thanks to dynamic triple buffering which is a feature that's been in the works for almost five years. This means smoother animations, fewer frame drops, and overall, a faster desktop. Debian and Ubuntu have been shipping these patches in their versions of GNOME for quite some time, but now all GNOME users will be getting this benefit. Canonical's Daniel Von Voot, sorry if I mispronounced that, explained what dynamic triple buffering is by saying, use triple buffering if and when the previous frame is running late. This means the next frame will be dispatched on time instead of also starting late. It also triggers a GPU clock boost if deemed necessary by the driver. If the previous frame is not running late, then we stick to double buffering so there's no latency penalty when the system is able to maintain full frame rate. He says in his testing that this improves 4K overview animations on a basic Intel GPU from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. But wait, there's more. GNOME's JavaScript engine, which powers a lot of the desktop's functionality, has been tweaked to use less CPU and memory, making everyday tasks feel more responsive. And if you're using an external monitor connected to a discrete GPU, you'll notice much better stability and smoother performance. Plus, GNOME's file manager Nautilus is also much snappier, especially if you deal with large folders full of images and videos. Loading thumbnails is now up to five times faster rendering speed, and scrolling through files is 10 times faster than before. GNOME's built-in file indexing has also been optimized to use less memory while scanning your system. All of these optimizations add up to make GNOME 48 one of the fastest, most polished releases yet. But performance isn't the only thing getting an upgrade. GNOME 48 is also introducing some brand new tools like the digital well-being features to help you manage your screen time. Have you ever wondered how much time do you actually spend staring at your screen? Thanks to the GNOME team, you no longer have to guess. The new digital well-being tool gives you insights into your screen time and even help you set limits and giving you break reminders to build better habits. The new screen time usage feature lets you see exactly how long you've been using your computer each day. It tracks usage over time so you can compare today's screen time with previous days or weeks. Whether you're working, gaming, or whatever, you'll get a clear breakdown of how much time you're spending on your computer. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. Like a lot. <laughs> but tracking is just the beginning. You can also set daily screen time limits, helping you stay mindful of your usage. And once you hit your limit, GNOME 48 can send you a notification or even go a step further by turning your screen black and white in a grayscale to discourage more screen time. And if you're someone who tends to forget to take breaks, like me, GNOME 48 has got you, bro. I don't know why I said it that way. The new break reminders let you set up alerts to rest your eyes, stretch, or step away from the screen. It's based on healthcare recommendations so you can avoid eye strain and fatigue while staying productive. There are some cool third-party apps to help with the break reminders and that sort of stuff, but to have that and screen usage tracking all built into the desktop, well done, Gnome. Next up, let's talk about something that's going to extend your laptop's battery life. I use a desktop computer to create my content because bigger monitors and more screen real estate is vital for my recordings and editing. But I find myself working on a laptop all the time these days. Whether it's responding to emails, researching content for my next video, or just whatever, laptops used to be something I just had 
in case, and now it's basically 50-50. You might find me in a coffee shop a few days of the week with my laptop getting some work done, and so battery life is crucial. But batteries start to wear out after a year or two. Well, the GNOME team have added a new setting in GNOME 48 to extend your battery's lifespan. It's a new option that limits charging to 80% while your laptop is plugged in. Why does this matter? Well, constantly charging to 100% puts extra stress on your battery, which can shorten its lifespan over time. By keeping it at 80%, you reduce wear and keep your battery for longer. Now, this feature does require your hardware to support it, but if it does support it, you'll find this feature under Settings, Power, Battery Charging, and you just toggle it on, and that's it. Gnome will do the rest. HDR is a hot topic these days. If you've ever looked at an HDR-capable display and thought, wow, that looks incredible. You're not me. I've never really tried HDR. I don't even know if my monitor has HDR or not. I got it for color accuracy and I got it for a graphic design and that sort of stuff. So I don't even know if it has it. Hmm. Give me a second. I'm going to check real quick. Huh. Turns out I do have it. That's cool. Well, I guess I got to try HDR in some games now. But anyway, HDR, or high dynamic range, provides brighter highlights, deeper blacks, and a wider range of colors. And with GNOME 48, for the first time, GNOME now has system-wide HDR support. Although it is important to know that HDR-compatible apps are still limited in the amount of them at the moment, but this update lays the groundwork. If you have an HDR monitor or laptop screen, enabling HDR is pretty easy. Make sure your monitor is in HDR mode, and then just go to Settings, Display, high dynamic range, and then turn it on. Now, sometimes brightness control may be disabled in HDR mode, but GNOME has added a software-based brightness adjustment thing so that you can compensate for that. We're still in the early stages of full HDR integration, but this is a big step forward. Global shortcuts have been added to GNOME 48, and this is a huge deal for me personally. Honestly, it's been one of my biggest complaints about GNOME for years. Not the biggest, but still. Pretty up there. With GNOME 48 supporting global shortcuts, apps can now register system-wide shortcuts, allowing you to trigger actions from anywhere on your desktop, whereas before, in order to invoke a shortcut on any app, you had to switch to that app first. This was infuriating to me. Why, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Let's say you're recording a screencast in OBS. I do that often, as you might expect and you want to invoke a shortcut to do something in OBS while you're interacting with the software that you're screencasting. Well, you couldn't. Wasn't an option. This has been possible for a long time when using X11, but at first, Wayland didn't have this feature due to security concerns of invoking actions from one app to the other. Kind of makes sense, but it's a very important feature for many reasons for many people. About three years ago, Wayland added the ability to support global shortcuts, and though it took a while for GNOME to support this, it does now, which is going to solve some headaches for a lot of people, including me. GNOME also makes a plethora of apps, and GNOME 48 brings in some new apps to the library as well as updates to some existing apps. First up, GNOME's default image viewer has leveled up with some basic editing tools built in, letting you crop, rotate, and flip images without needing a separate app. The zoom controls have also been redesigned for easier navigation with one-click reset and preset zoom levels and also manual percentage if you'd like to do that. Plus, they added experimental support for raw images and XMP metadata. GNOME 48 introduces Decibels, a minimalist audio player designed for quick and easy playback of individual audio files. With a clean interface, waveform display for precision navigation, and playback speed controls, it's not a music player, but instead it's a really cool audio player, so you won't find a library to manage or a playlist feature, but if you want a simple tool to play sound samples or analyze some audio with the waveform, then this could be perfect. There are times that I just want to load up a simple audio file to test productions that I make, but then it loads up a full music player and it's just kind of annoying, so I have to, I have to remove that file from the playlist or the library because I don't want it to be in there and it's just kind of a mess. That's a bit too much for that kind of app, but I can see the value in this for sure because in this case, it would be really beneficial for me to be able to just quickly test some audio files and then good to go. 
GNOME's text editor also gets some improvements featuring a streamlined header bar, consolidated menus, and a more intuitive layout. Document properties are now easier to access, and for coders, the cursor position indicator has been moved into an overlay style for better visibility. GNOME 48 debuts some new fonts with Edweta Sans and Edweta Mono, which they say are designed for better readability, improved rendering, and broader language support. GNOME says that Edweta Sans is based on the Enter typeface, is optimized for high-density displays, while Edweta Mono, a variant of Yoveska, Yosevka, something like that, enhances clarity for coding and terminal use. And last but certainly not least, GNOME 48 brings a major, major accessibility upgrade. Orca Screen Reader now fully supports Wayland. This means keyboard shortcuts and the caps lock modifier key work seamlessly, making GNOME's default display server more accessible than ever for visually impaired users. It's a big step forward. If you appreciate this kind of video, drop a like and consider subscribing for more Linux and open source content. Also, if you didn't know, I make a weekly Linux news show called This Week in Linux. Here's two of the latest episodes of the show for you to check out if you haven't already. By the way, what are your thoughts on GNOME 48? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.